At the Sitka Conservation Society, we are actively involved in the restoration of lands and communities in Southeast Alaska. This is the first in a series of narrated slideshows that describe what restoration is and what we do at SCS. My name is Scott Harris. I'm the Watershed Program Manager at the Sitka Conservation Society. It is critical to understand that restoration includes two dimensions. The first is ecological restoration, and that's the one most people think of when they hear the word restoration. We're talking about ecological restoration when we talk about habitats, ecological processes, salmon, deer, things like that. However, the second dimension of restoration is equal, if not more important, and that is restoring our personal and community's connections to the landscape. And not just the pristine landscape, but the landscapes we actually utilize and need to understand and take careful care of. There will be more on this in the second narrated slideshow. But first, let's talk about ecological restoration. A good definition of ecological restoration is an intentional activity that initiates or accelerates the recovery of an ecosystem with respect to its health, integrity, or sustainability. So therefore, one big assumption in that definition is that damage or degradation has occurred. This can be from natural or human causes. Natural causes can be things like large-scale floods, wind throw, a tsunami, etc. However, human causes, and the one we'll be talking about, are primarily from industrial clear-cut logging, the pulp mill era from roughly 1950s through the 1990s. Another important concept to understand before we talk about ecological restoration is a watershed. So a watershed is all the land that if rain was to fall or water, all that water would flow down into the watershed and eventually go to the lowest point. And the ultimate lowest point is the ocean. And it's important to understand the watershed concept because when we talk about restoration and plan restoration, we need to consider the entire watershed. Not just a patch of old growth or a patch of young growth forest or, or a stream reach. It's really critical to look at the entire watershed and understand how the whole watershed functions to provide the values that we want out of it, whether that's wildlife habitat or timber or whatever. For the purposes of examples, when we talk about watershed restoration, it's easiest to talk about two components. One is stream restoration, where we're primarily trying to restore fish habitat, and the other is water, uh, forest restoration, where we're primarily trying to restore a habitat for wildlife. This photo shows some of the challenges we face with stream restoration. This is a picture of Shelikoff Creek on Kruzoff Island, right next to the Mud Bay Road system. The photo above is where logging occurred. And before 1990, it was legal to cut trees all the way to the stream banks. So not only were big trees removed from the stream banks, but trees are also literally removed from the stream as well. Machinery that came through the stream and use the stream as a roadbed would cut out logs or yard them out of the way. Now the photo on the bottom is the same stream only about a mile further upstream where logging didn't occur. So you can see the stark contrast between the two different types of habitat. There's been a lot of research on the value of large wooden streams and we won't get into that here but let's just accept that large wood and complexity is an important habitat characteristic for salmon and other fish. So this challenge is to go from the photo above to try to go to the photo below to try to reincorporate or reinstall that type of complexity and large wood into the stream. And this is a photo in Star Gavin Valley today. This photo shows some of the challenges we face with forest habitat restoration. Often when an area is clear-cut logged, what grows back is a stand of trees that's very similar, the same age. They grow very dense and tall, and eventually they shade out the understory. So you can see in this picture that there's pretty much nothing growing on the forest floor. That means there's very little for wildlife, especially deer, to eat. So here's the challenge for restoring forest habitats. To go from a young growth forest where there's densely growing trees and shaded forest floors 
to a more diverse landscape that has trees that are multiple ages, allows light to the forest floor so that plants can grow, but also provides some form of cover for during winter snows. That's a basic summary of ecological restoration, divided into the two components of stream restoration and forest habitat restoration. In additional segments in these narrated slideshows, we'll talk a little bit more about the other dimension of restoration, and then we'll also give some specific examples of how Sika Conservation Society is actively involved in both of those dimensions of restoration.